tonight. Special show. Um, it's actually changed since we started. I have Chris here as well, Thrift Shop Hustler. And we have Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter, tonight. And we are just going to be touching Sorry, on... I have Chris here. Bolo's... Hang on here. Let me uh, figure out which page we have opened. Hang on, folks. Just a second here. Sorry about this. We're just trying to clear up the other pages so we don't have strays on the wrong page here. Um, as soon as I get the right page opened... Uh, there we are. Okay. So one more second, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, if you guys want to right hang on yeah. a second. <laughs> we had to, to do some last minute changes. Google Hangouts has uh, gone away. And um, so it's time to switch over to a new program. And when I had Don on my show, I was using StreamYard with him. So I was uh, telling him about that today and that we should uh, try this. But it uh, wasn't really evident because, you know, uh, that Google Hangouts had completely gone away because they only announced it kind of internally on YouTube, you know, to people uh, here and there. But uh, if you go look and you go search in the news, you would think that Hangouts is still around until October 1st. So um, we were going to do a Hangouts, but, uh, you know, at the end, we just switched it over to StreamYard. So that's why we had just a little delay and multiple links up. But Yeah, sorry, folks. Yeah. Give me just a minute here. We're just going to try and redirect everybody over to here. And let me try and kill the events that aren't live. Okay, so I only have the one now. So we should be good to go, it looks like. Yeah. And the good thing about this in the future, Don, um, because when we, when we originally planned on doing a Hangouts, uh, we were going to do a Bolo show. You know, I'm pretty then just limited to having to show you physical items that I have in my hand. But the cool thing about StreamYard is that you could allow your guests to screen share. So you'll see, you'll see the functionality there to let you to do that. So, uh, you know, I could then just show things on eBay. You could show things on eBay or wherever you want to show them from, you know, Chris can as well. So it's really a you know cool added feature. Hang on just a second here. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever been on uh, StreamYard. We tried to do it that one time, uh, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Dominique, and uh, that was like on, through the cell phone and stuff. So, yeah, I, I don't know about this. I'm not a big cell phone fan on that, but if it works, I'd be happy. We're almost there, folks. I'm sorry about that. I just need a couple more settings to adjust, and I think we will be good to go. In fact, it looks like I got everything situated. There shouldn't be any other feeds up guys if somebody can just check for us i don't want to leave anybody on the wrong feed but on my end i only see the one which is us right now live so hopefully that is the case i see we've got about just over 60 people in now again i do apologize for the rough start um, from now on we'll just be using this um, so you won't see any other issues we have a tentative date for another live show coming up with the three of us as well so you will see more of us um, hopefully everybody wants to and we will go from there um, again it's been a tight day i've just been kind of swamped here. Um, and I know uh, Dom has been busy. Chris, I'm sure, has been swamped just as well. Uh, I get emails all the time, and that's pretty much what everybody's telling me. They're pretty busy. I again, it depends on what you sell. So if you're selling winter items or summer items or whatever the case may be, you may not be packed in there too. So um, we're good on the feeds, it looks like, on everything. Dom? Yeah, everything's looking good. Yeah, this is the only live show you currently have going on. Your actual channel shows an, an ad for another live show at 7, but it didn't kick off. So just erase that one later and stick with this one. Don't even yeah, worry. Yeah, it doesn't even show it on my end right now. It must just be the one that's still rolling that they didn't. Uh, I, I can't kill it on my end. There's no option to even look at it now. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's fine. I think I've got enough notices in there. Well, evening, folks. I'm sorry about that. I know we wasted a few minutes here. Um, hopefully, you know, everybody, um, let's see how you pop around to see how we can introduce. In fact, let's just leave it the way we have it now with the, the three of us like this. So we're not, um, bouncing all over the place until it's time. Um, I will have to figure out how we change from one screen and not, um, let's just try something just for a second. Yeah. You'll, you'll see different, uh, options there, Don underneath it. It'll, it'll give you like different templates and you could switch back and forth, uh, whenever you want to. Yeah. 
Okay, I see the share <laughs> the screen option. I'm just trying to figure out how I can make one of you guys full sized. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know that because I have only done with one guest before. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. We'll just leave it like this, I guess, for today. Yeah, people will still be able to see it okay like this. Yeah, hang on. Let me change one more setting then. I know, folks, we, we've we've bounced around a lot here, but let's kind of make it all kind of up to This the is the life right of the YouTuber. Last second changes. My fault. So I'll take make, the blame for this one here. Making adjustments at the last moment. Uh, we've all been there. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually up on this, but man, I haven't had a chance to breathe. Um, let me just call out a few channel things before we get into the discussion. Just a couple real quick ones here. Um, the other channel I have, The Art Professor, I spent the entire weekend. I've got like four videos ready to go. Um, so this weekend here, you'll probably see the other channel. I've got a something nice I'm going to give away, and I'll probably give it away um, on the other channel, obviously. So that's coming down the line. Patreons. Um, next video is already done, um, and it's just got to be finished editing and uh, the title and stuff and all that stuff. So um, tentatively tomorrow afternoon, you'll see the first part. It's another good two-part um, bolo. I, I have a Q&A. Um, I, I think I'll roll the two-part bolo, though, first and then the Q&A. Just FYI, I see some folks from Patreon. So we'll go at that route here. Um, I will let uh, Dom introduce himself, and then we'll pop down to Chris, and then we'll shoot off with some bolos right after that, guys. So, Dom, if you'd like to lead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name's Dominic, the primetime treasure hunter. Uh, I primarily sell on eBay, although I do some local marketplace sales as well. Um, I've been doing eBay since about 2000. I've taken some breaks here and there. I work uh, a separate full-time job on the side in the hospital. So that's where I am most of the day. And then I'm just balancing that out with uh, family life and uh, reselling. I run a Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, where we just hit a, or we're about to hit 11,000 people in there today. And uh, I run a YouTube channel, Primetime Treasure Hunter, and uh, coming close to 7,000 in there. So uh, doing a lot of social media stuff as well as the reselling. And Chris, you want to pop in there now? Hey everyone, I'm Chris, uh, the thrift shop hustler, professional eBay seller for the American Cancer Society, uh, YouTuber, and all that fun stuff. Glad to be here. Thanks for uh, letting me slide in here in the last minute. <laughs> we love you, Chris. Thank Chris you. Chris is a good guy. So um, if I would have thought he would have been available, we would have had it ahead of time. Um, we're still tentative for next week to do another live show as well on Chris's channel. So um, if you haven't subscribed to Dom or Chris, their actual screen names are right there below their name. You can also click down below. I do not have Chris's link down below because it was a last minute, but as soon as the show ends, I'm going to add it in there for you too. Um, Chris, I think you've got the ability to pop in your uh, your um, uh, site, your uh, channel on there if you want into the uh, feed. I can't tell on my side here. If you no got problem. It. For those that are in the chat, you just click the three buttons. You can go to my channel. Don't worry about it. You can find me. Yeah, you can click the link too. I think it should let you. At least I hope yeah. it will. Okay, so um, we've all kind of picked some. Hopefully, Chris has got a few there with us too. I've got some uh, bolo items here, and I wish I could figure out how to clip it so it's one big screen. Uh, is there a there way to go. that worked? Let's do <laughs> it's like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get everybody sick. I don't want to do that either. I don't want to cut you guys off the screen. Oh, that's all good. Yeah, it's a little hard to show you if it's kind of a small screen. I'm just going to start with a few items here, and then we'll try and get uh, the the same thing with uh, everybody else with a full or a larger screen. Bolo wise, you can play like three card Monty with everyone. Three card Monty. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, I'll shoot off one. I want to. We're going to talk about a bolo. I'll, I'll show you one. I'll talk about where I get it, and then we're going to hop off to the next person and, and do the same thing here. So literally, it's just going to be bolo items here. Now I've talked about models and toys and things like that. Now this is a HO scale. Um, it's plastic fill. If you haven't. Uh, been into models or vintage stuff like this. Plasticville is a main name brand. People are something that I always look for. Something like this is something that I would pay a dollar for, maybe two at the most. And what you wanted to too is make sure that they're all there, which this one actually has all the figures. 
people don't think these little tiny figures or these boxes and bins of little stuff, and this thing's just full of all kinds of other stuff, are worth much money, but this box alone is like 30 bucks with these tiny little hand-painted plastic bill figures. Now, a, a good place to get these, now this one here I think came from an estate sale, but a good place to get these are either local live antique auctions, at least that's where I find them at, uh, estate sales, as I said, you can find them at flea markets, but you're going to pay a heck of a lot more. So the number one area that I find them dirt cheap, as I said, is like an estate sale. It's usually in the basement section of a estate sale. Sometimes they'll pull it up, but I like the estate sales that are just a bunch of junk just piled in a house. I don't like the ones that are really organized because they'll separate and pull all the good stuff up to the front. They'll high price it. They'll sometimes even show you eBay prices, which I could care less. If they want eBay prices for it, list it on eBay. That's my take on it. <laughs> Most of the time, I won't even go to those that I know that will do that. So that's just my take. So hopefully that gives you an idea on this. Chris, I have up on the top here. So let's hand it off to Chris and see if Chris has got an item here for us. And I think I've well, nope, I guess I haven't figured out how to get it going. <laughs> Let's see here. Let me see if we can't get the screen uh, different here. Nope, now we're back to that there you one. Go. That's well, fine. We'll, I'm trying to get it so everybody's big. We'll have to play around with this. I yeah. can't figure out how to get it that way. Well, the funny part about those estate sales that you go to when they have the eBay prices on there is like, Anyone could ask a crazy amount of money for a pencil, like you know, five million dollars for a pencil. It doesn't mean that it's going to actually sell for five million. So you get that a lot, where someone shows a chair and it's sold for like five thousand, or someone's trying to sell it for five thousand dollars on eBay. It's probably worth fifty bucks. So uh, I think some of the estate sale places are a little mixed up. Um, I have I have some stuff around me. I guess I can grab. Uh, this is kind of a. Some people might know about this. Is like Apple. Uh, power adapters and Apple chargers and things like that. Uh, you can go to basically any uh, garage sale and people usually have older Apple products. And uh, what I find is the AC adapters for different things like iMacs, iBooks, all that kind of stuff. They sell really for good money, especially like airport things, Wi-Fi things. This one happens to be one for a cinema display. Uh, like I said, uh, you can easily find these for like a dollar or two dollars at a, a garage sale. This sells easily for like 40 bucks, 30 bucks all day long. And a lot of the older ones that are hard to find, sometimes people uh, pay up for those. But, you know, these things are in quarter bins at garage sales, even estate sales. They might, like Don said, there might be a pile of computer stuff. Uh, I always look at adapters, especially Apple products. You got one out there for us, um, uh, Dom? Absolutely. So uh, this one, this first one is just going to be a seasonal item. Uh, it's uh, more, I have this in mind for people who are new resellers who are tuning in and, you know, are still kind of getting used to, you know, what exactly is possible that I could resell and what should I look for at different places. And, you know, Halloween is right around the corner. And so I would advise that you go out to your local flea market and you look for some Halloween costumes. And what you will find uh, often at uh, flea markets is that you'll usually find a couple of vendors who have these just spread out tons of them piled like a mountain on tables they bought them for really really cheap and they're just trying to get rid of them like five bucks a piece usually so you can find some amazing costumes that way you'll also find them at garage sales and this is just a regular uh you know zombie one um but you know i found one i remember last year at a garage shell it was uh, of like a priestess and uh that one wound up selling for like 85 bucks i only i got it for like three four bucks at a garage sale so it's halloween time Obviously, I'm talking about Halloween costumes, Halloween stuff in general, like Halloween decorative items in general, they'll sell all year round. Don talks about that with postcards and stuff. Um, you know, for some people, Halloween is a, a way of life. It's like a That's culture. For sure. They live it all year round. It's hard for people who don't do that to understand that. But there is a year round market for Halloween stuff. Now, I'll also say I'm bringing this up right now because it is um, it is Halloween. So that's when more of these costumes will sell. But don't think that they won't sell year round. There's always people who are going to costume parties and, um, you know, there's people who, um, you know, do like, you know, role playing for different reasons that they will want these kind of things. So, you know, they will sell all year round. But this time in particular, 
uh, you'll definitely uh, find them, like I said, in those big uh, mountains on the tables at the uh, flea markets. It's Let me piggyback off you for just a minute. Yeah. And I'm going to give some people some, some advice on that. Now, if you saw my Halloween show last year, the Gene Simmons from Kiss costume that I wear runs, they go for around 275 or better, if you don't know. That's a Halloween costume you need to look for. The boots alone for that costume are... 125 to 175. So my outfit, if I sold it just the way it was, would be around $500. It's an off-the-shelf costume that you do. I mean, you can find this. This was something that I scored at a sale for almost nothing. So just shout out to that. And with Dom's, and I, I know Halloween's coming up, so I don't want to not touch on this. A good, good way to do that when you're selling stuff out of season for costumes, and a lot of people miss this aspect, is Almost every month there is a sci-fi or a comic convention or a cosy play or something like that, an anime convention across the country somewhere. There's probably one almost every week of the year somewhere. If you put that in the title for your costumes when you list it, like um, comic convention or something along that line, you have a better chance of selling those out of season. At least that's my personal take on it. So. Yeah, Let me yeah I'm, I'm gonna put the keyword in there right there, which is uh, is cosplay. Um, C O S P L A Y. Um, there are cosplay contests, like Don said, at comic book conventions, and so uh, people... I've entered them myself. I've won one too. So I, the whole family went. We did one the whole year. We were all Tuscan Raiders at a Detroit show, and we won best of show for the family. So I do that for a living on the side too. <laughs> yeah, in fact, if you want to see what it looks like if you've never been to one before. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel and you actually, there are some times where I've done uh, uh, videos where I'm, you actually see me sourcing at a comic book convention and you'll see, you know, I'm sitting there looking at comic books and next thing you know, Spider-Man's walking by, Wonder Woman's walking by, the Incredible Hulk walks. It's like, you know, people dress up in all sorts of, you know, outfits and they stay that way throughout the day and they act in character uh, for, for a lot of the, uh, a lot of the day as well. Let, let me let me let me holler out one thing. Now, this is I'm gonna put a, a name in the feed here. Um, hang on just a second here. My friends do this, he does it on the side for a living. If you want to see a video that Cosy Play people like me did, and this is somebody I personally know did this, it's called Trooper Clerks. It won best of show from uh, the Lucas Films. He won an award. He got a deal. He met all the people, you know, Lucas and the whole works. He helped create Trooper Clerks, and he creates those type of costumes on his own in his garage. I mean, he does professional stuff. He hooked me up with the 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 faceplate templates for the Sand People from Star Wars. The, the the guy is the bomb. If you like Star Wars and you've seen the movie Clerks with uh, Jay and Silent Bob. He did a combination of the two together. Last I know, he, he was, had like millions and millions of views. People have copied it. They've made cartoons and all kinds of stuff, but enough on that. Let me show you another, another Bolo item here. Now, I love toys and stuff like that. This is just a bag of literally what most people would pass up as junk, but this is 80s and 90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, accessories. All the little guns, and uh, the accessories that go to the, the figures. This stuff can go for more than the figures sometimes because they're lost so easily. So like swords and guns and stuff like that. Now I know, you know my characters as well. So it helps if you know what they go to, but stuff like this is usually almost nothing. If it's in a big dump bin, I can usually throw, you know, 50 items together for a dollar or two at a sale. And garage sale, flea market, church sales are the bomb for stuff like this because at a church sale, they just bag them up and throw them in a tote and that's it. A dollar or two and off they go. They don't care what's in it, just random assortments. People bring in all kinds of stuff at a church sale. I found 1930s toys mixed up with almost new stuff from like the 90s and 2000s at a church sale on many, many occasions. So that's probably the best place to get real cheap toys for us around here are church sales. So let's keep on going around if you want, Chris. You want to take over the next one? 
Yeah, it's funny when you showed that bag. I saw the <clears throat> I saw the Ninja Turtle blimp bomb in there, and like I knew That's... exactly right right away what you had. I didn't realize it was a whole bag of Ninja Turtle stuff, but yeah, some of those pieces you can definitely part out. Uh, when I bought a um, when I buy vintage Star Wars figures, usually I'll part out the weapons because usually you know you get a lot more money just by parting out the weapons, especially if they're authentic. And that's a whole other thing we can talk authentic. about. Yeah, they killed it when they dumped out all the the fake. Yeah. There, yeah. the, the reproductions they they really made a, a lot of those um just real quick before i get to my other bolo uh to touch on what uh, dom was saying you know halloween decor also vintage stuff in the packaging uh definitely if you can find that kind of stuff so i had this here i just thought i wanted to show what you know some vintage uh you know this isn't really super vintage but just halloween decor especially skeletons uh do very well for sure and uh, where did that item go? I just had it here, and I don't know where it is. I guess some, I could pull something around, and then I'll, I'll find that other thing I was talking about. Uh, Hallmark ornaments. Christmas time's coming up in a few months. We're getting there to quarter four. Uh, definitely, there's some Hallmark ornaments that go for a crazy amount of money. There is one uh, from uh, Christmas Vacation, the the crazy guy with the RV, I forget what his name, Randy Quaid or Dennis Quaid or Randy Quaid, I play, I think, he, well, there's a, there's an RV that's uh, a Hallmark figure or a Hallmark ornament that goes for over $150. Three, so, three fifty. I've seen that one for. Yeah. So see the prices have gone up since the last time I checked. So, um, a lot of Hallmark ornaments aren't worth a ton of money, but there are a few of them that are worth some money. You can usually find these at estate sales. I usually find these at garage sales uh, in the summertime or just like January or February. People are cleaning out their closets for spring cleaning. You can usually come up on a tubs of these things for like, uh, I think like I paid like $40 for a tub of like a hundred and something at one point. And uh, I, I pieced those out. You know, the Star Trek ones are the ones to look out for. They used to be the the ones that were very desirable. Some of the tar Star Trek stuff has softened over the last 10 years, but those are some of the, some of the original ones there. Uh, Marvel and some certain types of sports characters do very well. This happens to be a marble from uh, maybe about a year or two ago. Uh, this can easily sell for $10, $15. But if you can buy a bunch of these in a collection, a whole lot of these, you know, you can get these for as low as 50 cents. And uh, just another warning, just to open these up, look at them, make sure they're not used. Usually the new ones won't have hooks in them. Uh, these will not have hooks in them. You have to put hooks in them yourself. So that's another pro tip. Uh, usually if you see these and they have like tissue paper around them and they look like pretty much mint those usually you can tell if they're brand new these aren't sealed ever so it's hard to tell if they're brand new or not you have to do a little bit more inspecting on them so uh hallmark ornaments it's uh, q4 coming up on the hallmark another one to look for is um i can't think of the um shoot this the 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 leg lamp Oh, geez. I can't think oh, of the name. Oh, yeah. The Christmas story. The, yeah. That one, they have some ornaments for that. And the leg lamp one's like one of the most expensive ones I've out had, of there. I've had that before. Yeah. You know exactly which ones I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dom, you want to drop yeah. on down now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to show you one right now that um, I actually found in my most recent uh, haul video that I put up at the estate sale. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because I had some interesting uh, follow-up comments on it from from viewers who said I never would have thought to source something like that and that is these vintage far side calendars okay now not. Don and Chris probably I'm gonna guess they never told me this but I, I'm gonna bet they had one of these back in the day I did as a kid I remember I could get them every, every year I did routinely got them as a Christmas gift my so, wife collects the coffee mugs from those the coffee mugs yep. yeah so they're awesome. So these were, you know, daily calendars. We're not talking about the wall calendars. You, you just kind of sit it on your desk and every day it would go by, you know, you pull one off and there'd be a new far side, um, you know, cartoon to look at, you know? So um, the reason why people would still be interested in something like this is really both there's collectible uh, aspects of it, but then there's also the nostalgia part of it as well. 
in that someone who remembers being a kid, you know, and, and growing up and pulling them off and, you know, they want to go back and, and get it and just kind of look back at them again. They won't pull them off again, probably, but they'll just, you know, be able to flip through them and it'll bring them back to maybe a, a real happy year of their life or happy time of their life. And they kind of like reconnect with it. So at the estate sale, I found these sitting there. There was, I believe, seven of them I wound up getting. Uh, all different years from the mid 90s to early 2000s, right on the bookshelf. As soon as I walked in, I just grabbed them all, scooped them off. And the great thing about them is that when I open them up, you could see here the tab is still on here. So they're all um, in mint condition. They have not even been used. And that's going to make it you know, the most valuable. Uh, in terms of comps for them, individually, if you just found one of them, like at a flea market or something, a garage sale, probably only like 15, 20 bucks, maybe max. But, um, you know, I saw recently that someone had uh, sold uh, nine of them. Now, eight of them had the box, but uh, so one of them didn't. And the other ones that were there, they were all separated from the main base. So they weren't even attached. And those sold for around 100 bucks. So, you know, with these being all in mint condition. I'm not sure what they're all going to go for together, but uh, be on the lookout for them because, you know, a lot of people said they would have passed these up. So it's the far side ones that you want to look for. Yeah, far side. I love far side. I remember reading them when I was a young child. So for me, far side has been a mainstay. Uh, the wife honestly has a whole bunch of coffee mugs. And whenever we see a new one, uh, I buy it for her. That's like her thing is the far side coffee cups. I know ex the second you held up that calendar, they'll <laughs> sell used even, even out of the box. I sell those as yep. long as it's complete. Yeah. Far side, anything, even the, the fold out vintage far side will go well. 70s and 80s ones go extremely well. Um, it's it's something I personally look for. I don't know if I would sell that. I'd have to read them off first before you know I did anything. <laughs> at least at least that's my my take on it. Yeah, well, I'll say something else related to it, Don. I, I don't know your take on it or you, Chris, but I see these kinds. These were very common, and these were mass produced, laying around all over the place. And if I just see one of them. I usually don't pick it up. I only get something like this if I could find like a huge bundle of them and then I myself could flip them as a lot. Um, but, you know, like, you know, picking up one of them, I usually don't get again, unless it was like really cheap or something like that. But you got for those, you really got to build them up and have a lot of them to be able to sell them. The galleries are very common. They were, you know, bigger book like uh, ones. Um, but, you know, I usually, again, we'll, we'll pass on those smaller ones unless they're in you know significant quantity 55 cents or less if they're 55 cents or less i'll buy them and then yeah. i'll just set them aside and, and i've got probably four or five of those now just like the garfields or the snoopies i'll set them aside i got shelves of everywhere else until i get 10 or 15 of them and i run into those like the far side one or two a week on average i would say i mean the last group i put up sold like the first day but i i usually put those at a reasonable rate and just blow those kind of things out at least that's what i do with them Hey, you know, that kind of brings up a point because one thing that was in the title was also sourcing tips. And I think we just you just brought up a sourcing tip uh, that I do as well, which is sometimes having some forethought on the items you're picking up and just realize based on your experience whether or not it's likely that you're going to come across some more of a particular item that you just ran into. Maybe there's not a lot of them right there, but you could get them at a good rate and then set it aside and just wait till you run into some more. Uh, <laughs> I actually just showed that in my last video where I came across a bunch of Super Mario uh, television show DVDs. I came across seven of them and I knew I had eight more back here at Primetime Treasure Headquarters. And so I combined them all together when I got back and I was lucky that there weren't any doubles. So now instead of having seven, I've got 15. And so I have that stuff in my mind. You should always kind of have those things in your mind. Like, okay, you know, if I see more of those, pick them up because now I haven't listed them yet and I could do even better with them. I do the same thing. I have uh, like those uh, file boxes here in the back where I'll put like stacks of sealed DVDs, sealed CDs. And once I have a, a pretty good amount of them, I'll, I'll lot them up if they're not good for individual sales. So I think that's actually a really good tip, you know, for, you know, bundling all the stuff together, especially sourcing them at a good price is, is definitely something that everyone should strive uh, to do, not picking them up individually, but trying to get a whole collection of them because you can get them usually cheaper.
Yeah, definitely on that. Let me call out Brandon. Thank you very kindly for the $2 super chat. Very much appreciated. Uh, so again, thanks. Thanks very kindly there, Brandon. Um, going right off on this piggyback on buying assortments of stuff. Now, I buy Mark's toys all the time. I've got a big old box of them that I picked up just the other day. Talking about picking up multiple items. Now, this is from one pick. This is one figure. Now, these are religious figures. Um, you'll see them at church sales mostly, but Mark's made a lot of these. And the other ones I'll show you in just a second here um, were made in Italy. Now, next time I found the same one again, these are the same figures. I've got about 15 of this exact same figure right now that I found at all different times. So this is just fodder, I guess you would say, for things to put in lots. And I have probably about 40 now religious figures like this from this size. I think I even have one a little bigger. Now, I show these a lot because I sell them every time I put them up. It's something that you can pretty much, at least I can guarantee, I will find over and over again. At one church sale, I can find 10 or 15 of these sometimes. And as I said, vintage is the most important one. This one here is actually from Italy, 1950s. Metal Halo. I do love religious stuff. I was an altar boy for many years. Um, you know, I was well endowed in the church and stuff. So I know most of the characters, most of the things. I used to volunteer my time at the the uh, Christmas Bazaar, and then we did the, the Boy Scouts for the church fundraiser every year. I did the Polish festival as well. So this kind of stuff is always around in my neighborhood. I always know which church sales are the best ones to go to. If you don't mess with religious stuff, you're really missing out in general because I can just make a ton of money off of religious items. And here's just another example. Now, this is another Italian piece. They have a manger set that these go to, and this is one of the angels from it. Um, I can't remember the name, but it starts with an F. They're almost all marked with a, a funky um, number system at the top there. And then Italy, and it starts with an F, and I wish I could remember the name of it, but the angel like this is like 10 or 15 bucks. Closer you get to Christmas, 17, 18 bucks. It's almost double around Christmas time. The angels, um, baby Jesus, are probably the most sought after characters. And then bouncing off again, a little bit out of the ordinary, another angel figure here. Now, this is a 1940s or 50s, and it has the tag still on it. It doesn't look like much, and most people wouldn't think much of this, but I'll get 15 bucks out of this. And I got a bunch of these. I got a bag of them, actually, for a dollar. Church sale. Most of this stuff is church sale. Most of it, again, I got a list from the last eight years of me going to church sales and which ones to go to. Our town has maybe 30 of them throughout the year. So I know exactly which ones to go to. I keep notes when I walk out of them on what I'm finding best sources, you know, which weekend of the year it is and the whole works, because they're almost always the exact same week every single year for years and years and years. So that's why I say keep track of stuff, write yourself some notes down, and I promise you it will increase your money making because you're not going to be wasting your time going to sales that may not have anything. You'll know which ones to go to. So we'll pop that over to Chris here. Hey, hey hold on, Don. I have a question for you. And Chris, for you to address this as well. Because as you know, I have featured religious items uh, many times on my channel, and I don't get any flack for it, but I do get some people who say, you know, personally, these are other resellers, I could never sell religious items because I feel guilty about it. <laughs> what? Um, I was wondering what your guys' thoughts are about that. Um, uh, or, you know, what would you say to somebody who... <laughs> You know who feels that way well for me i'm catholic so i really don't have Same a problem here. selling like religious things maybe if there was you know i've sold muslim uh memorabilia swords and kind of things like that and uh i've never had a problem with that um i think you know you just have for me like i just take religion and politics out of a lot of the selling things unless they're racist or you know what i mean they, they're touch on other subjects that you know are taboo i'll stay away from that kind of stuff but religion is something that i have no problem selling I sell it. The only thing I can tell you is I deal with some church organizations. I do some volunteer work. I'm Catholic as well, too. I was an altar boy, as I said. Regina Chaley Church here in Toledo. That's one of the churches. I went there as a, as a grade school student for many years myself. I went to church five days a week usually and then i served on the weekends as well so i'm i'm was a very devout christian for quite some time of my life i served for the bishop and as well a cardinal came into town and i was lucky enough to volunteer and i served mass at the holy rosary cathedral in downtown toledo 
I have no problem whatsoever selling anything religious. But again, the only thing I would say is most of the, the shops I go to give away the Bibles. And I feel guilty taking a Bible that I know I'm going to sell. And I always give them money for it, regardless as a donation, if they won't take money. That is a rule that I have always played by. Um, because I, again, I do feel guilty taking something for free that the church is using for goodwill without giving them something for it. So that that's the one exception that I've always, always, always made. Hand to God, I tell you, that's that's the truth. I always give a donation if I'm getting free stuff from a church sale. It's, it's just something you should do. A dollar an item or $2 an item, whatever you feel or they would be comfortable with, but always give them something if they're giving you something for free because they're they're giving it out of the kindness of their heart these are these are organizations that are here to to raise money like where chris works for the cancer society this is going to help stuff i lost a grandparent my grandmother died horribly from cancer so trust me i, I fully agree with donating and helping the cancer society in any way shape or form it was a miserable eight months of my life when i was 12 watching my grandmother die so trust me i fully you know donate or do what we can all the time that's why i donate compute i i use my computer skills and I help them with tech stuff and, and I'll, you know, reboot up computers so they can turn around and resell them whenever they need that kind of stuff. So that's the kind of stuff that I do, but there, there's no problem with selling anything just like political items. I'll sell and I'm not going to be political and I don't want anybody to take this political, but I don't care if it's Obama or Trump, if it's money, it's a legit item. It, it's, it's a open sale in my book because there's, there's two sides to every argument and I'm not trying to make any side good or bad or different. This is a business decision. I don't voice my personal opinions on religion and I don't voice my talking about the past is one thing, but I don't voice any of my current feelings or beliefs on religion or on politics. I don't think you could say um, that I've went to any political motive. The only thing I can say is, is health is an important issue. And I think most people should have health care. But other than that, you're free and clear to not bring up politics here. But we'll hop off to Chris now. Well, I will say I won't sell one thing, Ouija boards. I won't go near those things. I won't sell those things. I won't walk in the same room as a Ouija board. I just what about a haunted doll. I got one over here right now. Oh, I got I got so many haunted dolls in my in my collection right here. Do you see these haunted dolls? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any, anyways, I look. Well, all right. Go ahead. I was to say you could show that as a bolo, but whatever. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone's interested in dolls, and it's kind of funny. It's one of those uh, niches that I know about, and it's kind of scary because people are like, "Why do you know about dolls?" But I used to work at a at a uh, diecast hobby shop, and we sold dolls and, and diecast. And that was another great thing about working there for all those years, is I learned a crazy amount about dolls and bears. But anyways, my next bolo is. Uh, like basically, um, I forget what they're called. They're like subscription boxes. I think, uh, what, what, uh, Don, what is that one that's very famous? It's a subscription box. I don't have the name of it. Gearbox it, or something or, um, no, it's called something else. But anyways, uh, Marvel has one and there's always these little kind of items that I are, know exactly what you're talking about, but yeah, I don't exactly. the name of it either. I don't remember what it is either. Uh, right now. And it's funny because I always look for those because what happens is, so these little subscription boxes, you pay a month, you know, you get a comic book and some toys and some shirts and stuff usually. And they have exclusive items in these little things or little trinket things. Now, if you study and you know these particular things, like this is from the fifth element. Uh, this is the multi-pass from the fifth element. This was in a subscription box about five or six years ago. This brand new easily goes for $25. And you wouldn't know that unless you were heavily, it's Loot Crate. Thank you, dude. That's what it was. It was Loot Crate. Um, I, thought I knew exactly that I should have remembered that. Exactly. So this was from Loot Crate. This was from about uh, five or six years ago. This goes for easily $19, $25. Uh, these, the patches and stuff, they really don't go for that much. These are the things that you need to find in bulk and lot these up the pins and things but uh you find i find this stuff all the time at garage sales because people like they wear the shirt they read the comic and then they throw all these little goodies in a 25 cent bin so uh just look out for these kind of things and you know the multi-pass is great for cosplay and stuff like that so that's my bolo okay so chris you may like this especially that i'm going to show here because i know how much uh -huh. Video games. Not that Don doesn't like video games, but I just know I don't play them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I downloaded Diablo, the original one, the other day, though. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember. I can't play it anymore. The disc. You can't play the discs unless I want to oh. pull up my '96 uh, 
PC, which I really don't care to do. Well, I've got something even more old school here than than discs, and this is why I always tell people not to overlook the VHS section. A lot of people think VHS tapes are totally worthless, and there don't get me wrong, there's a lot of them that are worthless, but there's other things in there besides VHS movies that are VHS tapes, and this is a very good example. These are not movies. I found these at a garage sale, okay? Oh, these my goodness. Come from a video game system that was released in 1987, had a very short-lived life in the United States. It was called Action Max. And all of the games, and they only made five games, so I have almost all the games right here. There's only five made. They all worked with a light gun. So you remember the light gun that they had for Nintendo? Duck uh, hunt. The zapper gun. You could play duck, duck hunt. hunt stuff with it yeah and they had a few other games like gum shooter you could play but um all these games were basically point and click type of games with a gun they're very limited in terms of gameplay which is one of the things that led to its uh, demise pretty fast but there are people again who are still nostalgic for it and will pay up for these games uh three of these games recently sold for a hundred dollars okay and there's oh, wow. only five of them so I got them for like a couple bucks at the garage sale. It was interesting because the guy who was selling them, he had no clue. It was weird. He didn't even know what they were or why they were even in there. He didn't even realize that they weren't movies because I asked him if he had any more, or if he had the system. The si If you had the system, the system is hard to find with the box. That only goes for like 150 but the games, again, people will pay up for them because they're, um, they're hard to find. So, You, but, you know, they, that company... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just saying these things are out there. These are all things I obviously I have in hand. I found them. Well, I was going to say that company. I saw that working, and where I saw it, Rent a Center had a deal with them, like back in the day, and you could walk into Rent a Center and try it out, and Rent a Center would rent that unit, trying to push it. It's the only reason I even know what that is because of the old Rent a Center days, back when I couldn't afford furniture. You know, twenty plus years ago, thirty plus years ago, I guess. Chris was was talking about, you know, we talk about religious again. This is just my bin of rosaries. This is just rosaries. Uh, on from These are all listed, too. These are all live. I saw rosary, you know, every other week. You know, sterling ones go for anywhere from, say, 50 up to, like, 275 for a good sterling with rock crystal in it, which I have one in here as well, too. So I, I mess with anything religious, religious medals, which I have another bin of just religious medals. All that stuff goes for a ton of money. And like Chris with dolls, I'm happy with selling dolls. I buy them porcelain, whatever. The French ones are the best dolls you can get that sell for ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. No exaggeration yep. whatsoever. Let me just holler out um, something real quick here. Now, I talk about cards. Now, Patreons have seen some of these. I picked up another mass lot of tobacco silks. Now, these are actually silk. And I'm going to show you the best ones here in just a second. I just pulled out China because I make a ton of money off of China. I showed the China ID, World War II China ID. I sold it for 900 the other day. So, you know, I had oh, a $2,000 wow. day on Sunday. I did, uh, just in the store I share with you, we did $2,200 in sales on Sunday. Not counting my other stores, Amazon, or anything else. In one day, of course, the $900 was over half, or not over half, but a big chunk of my sales. But these are things that I look for. And again, this is silk. It's literally cloth. They were stuffed into packs of cigarettes or tobacco, chewing tobacco. Now, I have now, now I've got like five lots of these. I probably got about 500 decent ones of these in house. You're going to pay up for some of these things. These are, these are things that you can find though. What, where are you going to find these at the most? And I, I can give this out because you'll see them at auctions. It's not something, a hidden secret. People stitch these into pillowcases. And the best ones are like Native Americans, like this one here. Um, I've got a whole series of these, honestly. And these are the large format ones. But the pillowcases are where you're going to find these the most often. You're going to pay half of what you would if they were loose or, or like this. I go into that in a Patreon video, how to fix these all up there. You can re reclaim these back from a pillowcase and double your money on stuff like this, but you're going to shell up for stuff like this though. Usually on a good lot of these, if I'm buying hundreds of these, I'm shelling out a thousand or better, you know, at one shot on stuff like these, the Indian ones though are my favorites. If you find a baseball one, 
there's some baseball single silks like this that may sell for five or ten thousand dollars. On average, these Indian ones may be fifteen or twenty bucks um, once they've been uh, cleaned up. And these are cleaned up ones. I've actually done some work to them. They've been semi repaired and cleaned and the whole work. So I mean, this is something that I find local live auctions are great sources for this. I see a lot of people saying you can't make money doing this or you can't make money at estate sales. This is estate sales stuff that I will find. I don't go to garage sales anymore, hardly at all. I don't hit thrift stores anymore. I go to places that I can find higher dollar stuff. I don't want to be flipping small stuff and stuff. And again, you got to start somewhere, but if you can move up and you have the money, as you reinvest the money, you're going to be able to get better and better and better stuff where you're getting a better return on your investment. And that's just a perfect example of it. Again, I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those right now for little to nothing compared to what you'll get out of them. So hopefully that's an idea. Don't, don't you love when people tell us that we can't <laughs> sell what we no, we can sell because we've sold it before. Or you know, like I where... stick to the same kinds of items because I can get them cheap. I know what they're going to sell for. I know the items. And, and I like in my videos, I've touched on just a small, minuscule amount of the broad range of collectibles that we do. You can't give away everything, of course. You guys know that too. So anyway, <laughs> we'll hop yeah. it over to Chris. Oh yeah, for sure. But uh, like you said, you know the the market's changed over the last five years. Goodwill's cherry picking pretty much everything, and you have to really niche down. A lot of people aren't going to know about those silk things. For me, when I go into a Goodwill, I go to the art and the glass first because I know that those two departments are neglected. I found you know a four hundred dollar painting at a Goodwill one time. A lot of people don't know about that kind of stuff. So uh, you kind of actually have to roll with the punches in this business. And for those that say you can't sell this, you can't sell that. It's everyone's life experience and what they know. And uh, Don has his own experience, and uh, Dominique has his own experience. So, now you're uh, doing the Dominique thing. Uh, Dominique. Dominique. It's Dom. Oh, yeah. That's it. I told you I'm going to do it. You know what's hard about the Dominique thing is is it's it's Don and it's Dom. It's like who what who. Are, you know what? You're just going to have to do prime time for now. Prime on. time. There you go. <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So, you guys wanted to talk about the dolls. All right. Let's talk about the dolls. This is a googly eye porcelain doll. Now, there's some Kessner ones. That's the brand uh, K E S T E R, Kess or Kessner. They go for thousands of dollars and they're Google eye. So, you can't really miss them. They look really kind of creepy, but I'm going to actually share my screen real quick. And uh, we're actually going to try that. And I'm, I'm hopefully this is the first time I've ever shared a screen here. So hopefully that works. Uh, could you guys see the screen? My screen? We see you. Okay. So never mind. I guess it's not going to no, work. Because Don, ha Don would have to grant you authorization to share your screen. Uh, no worries I don't about it. Do that. So, anyways, just real quick, I'll just do this real bolo real quick. So look for these crazy googly eye dolls. Uh, this one is a reproduction, so it doesn't. It's not worth thousands of dollars. Uh, there's some of the Kessner vintage ones that go for easily two, three, four, five thousand dollars in mint condition. So look out for these creepy googly eye dolls. Ooh. <laughs> They've got some felt ones that are googly eye too, and I think it's oh, Len no or Lency, I think maybe. Uh -huh. I never but heard of those ones. Yeah, they're felt and they're from the twenties, and they they can go up to like I don't know five ten thousand dollars too if you get the right one. Yeah, and you can't miss them because those eyes are very dominant, and there's not a lot of dolls that have those eyes. So if you don't know anything about dolls, if you at least see those crazy eyes, you know to like kind of take another look at them. Okay, uh, next item that I'm going to show you is really not that I'm trying to show you this specific item. It's just to kind of cue you in on this class of item. And if you're not someone who grew up watching uh, monster movies, of course, even if you didn't, you're going to know who uh, Godzilla is. This is not regular Godzilla, though. This is space Godzilla. You could tell that from the little spikes that are coming out from his shoulders there. Um, but my point isn't about this figure necessarily. It's more just Godzilla figures in general not just godzilla himself but you also need to know is the, that a toho this one is toho and you'll normally see that on the foot that it'll say toho uh bandai and some other companies make it it's kind of weird here we go takara so, makes the earlier ones that are from the die cast shogun era yep yep but they, these um you know you also just google some of the monsters that Godzilla has fought, so you're aware of them when you come across them, so that you recognize, for example, Ghidra the three-headed monster, or Gigan, who has like a spinning 
um, blade that comes down his chest or the smog monster or, you know, Manda or Kamakaris, uh, the, you know, the spider, you know, you need to know those figures so that when you see them, you say, ah, that's, that's one from the Godzilla series. I should pick it up. It's probably, you know, it's probably worth something because some figures, now these are more the new ones that are in the box. Um, if you were able to like buy out a collector or something can go for, you know, some could go for like the early, the, the, the low one thousands, um, like a thousand, thousand one hundred. Uh, there's many that will go for hundreds of dollars for Godzilla action figures. He's super, super popular. Almost anything Godzilla. He's kind of like a timeless character. So anything related to him in the series, definitely pick it up. Yeah, definitely. I'm a big. I grew up watching Godzilla. I remember the original one with I think um, what was it Raymond Burr? I think maybe is in it or somebody like that. Uh, Raymond Burr was in Godzilla 1984. Um, there, I think he was in the 1957 version, or the original one has an American actor. And it's, yeah, you're uh, right. You're I, right. He came back in 1984 to kind of commemorate, but he was right. He was in the early one. I think that was the 1950s. 57, 19- I think, is when it yeah. came out. I'm a huge Godzilla fan as a yeah. kid. I watched Ultraman, too, when that came out. Um, and that was, again, like the, the shows that came out. 10 years earlier in Japan, we're now over here. I watched, you know, Go Force and uh, or G Force, um, all that kind of stuff when I was when I was younger because it was just still coming in. It was again 10 years old. Um, I collected uh, Micronauts, which was Microman in Japan. So I've always been into Japanese toys. Um, anything with Japanese text in the bottom, if it's a dollar or less, I usually just buy it. If it's a Toho figure. And any, I could tell you all the Toho figures. I mean, I could name every one that we found. We've Toho is is like the bomb for Godzilla for me in my book. Is I find those the wife picks them up nowadays. She's she knows exactly which ones to look for. Toho is the bomb. Um, like I knew instantly what he had there because again, Godzilla is the bomb. Um, so forth. I love that kind of stuff personally. So let me let me just show out some other things here. Um, three foot photos. Now I know people may not. <laughs> know what that is but they're called three foot photos mostly military world war ii world war one um there's very few before world war one you might find some from um like the mexican border war from say 1912 through 16 but here's just a a perfect example of what these are now i usually take them out of the frame i don't usually mess with the framed ones at all just because i don't want to have to mess with it um because they're literally three foot and with packing and all they're high risk, even if you pack the best because of the size of the glass in it. And if you break a pane of glass with something like this, you're going to probably damage the photo. Now, these are something that most people miss because in me and Dom have talked about this as well with posters, because what you see are just a couple of tubes laying on a shelf at a sale. Usually I get these for a dollar, sometimes two or three. I've spent as much as five is the most I've ever paid for a rolled poster. This is World War II on this one here. Sometimes it's a whole field of like uh, tanks or howitzers or vehicles or um, just in general, like just interesting images. Let me see if you can see what's in here. And you can see some of the images in here. Usually it'll say where it's from, like testing grounds or snipers or, you know, stuff like that. But these, again, these are like a dollar a piece at a estate sale. Most people won't even pick them up because they won't know how to photograph them, even if they did know what they were, because it's almost impossible for for somebody not thinking enough to to know how to do it. We hang them just like a poster. We've talked about this this before as well. But, you know, these on average, I get around 50 bucks a pop for them. Every one. I don't care what it is. They ID. Each one has the name of who it is, where it was taken, what year it was taken. You know, the branch of the military, everything. Some The best ones, too, are like an air airfield or something along that. U- United States Army Air Force, all the planes light up on the field. Those are awesome. I see Chris has got a military one there, too. Yeah. Those are the best ones. The, the next best ones would be like a deck photo of the big guns on top of a battleship. Three-foot-long photos we're talking about. And they're not just military. I've got them from, you know, inaugurations. Um, funerals. Um, there's just all kinds of them that are the three foot long ones, but that's the key on it. 36 inch photos. It takes a special type of camera. It's it's an elaborate. People just don't want to mess with them or they just look at and see it's a poster and don't even realize that it's a photo. I, again, I don't think I've ever spent more than five bucks in 25 or 30 years of buying these on average 50 bucks a pop 
for the ones that I put 5750. You guys all know what kind of prices. And, and most of the time I take that on them. I don't have to argue over prices. It's usually sold the first or second day these go up too. So quick sale. You can't beat that, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. No, go ahead. I was just going to say that brings up a good point with regards to sourcing tips because you're mentioning a specific measurement. I mean, people could pretty much probably estimate uh, three feet, but I've always joked and told people I'm terrible with visual spatial stuff. So I actually carry around a little, uh, a little tape measure with me to sales. And one of the things that really helps me out with a lot when I'm checking comps, uh, especially with regards to action figures of different sizes is um, I could get the specific size on it and then I could check the comp much better and um, you know get a better sense of exactly what the value of it is. I was wondering if if you guys do Tape that. Tape measure more. 100% everywhere I go. Poster wise, like if you're looking for a poster, the reproductions are usually not the same size as the originals. A movie poster is 27 and a half by 41. That is an official NSS National Screen Service movie poster for 80 years of movie posters, including to this day. A two sheet is 40 by 60. Unless you know and measure a movie poster, the newer ones do not have an NSS number on it because several companies now make them. Without that ruler, you might buy a, a video release poster for good money thinking it's a good one or it's just a knockoff. Like if you're running into, let's say, a Revenge of the Jedi poster, they're out there. I, I've got a couple and I've had them before in my life. If you run into one and it's not the right size, you won't know the difference if you don't measure it because that is the only difference between the fake one and the real one is the size. So yep. you know, ruler, tape measure, hopefully I would say Chris would say the same thing. No, I don't carry any. I don't carry a measuring sticker or nothing. <laughs> I have a jeweler's loop in, in the car, maybe. That's usually as far as uh, it, it's I carry a cloth roll yeah. up thing or a little hey, tiny tape measure. I've got I've got my famous blue bag of tricks. I mean, there's all sorts of things in there. <laughs> I actually did a video because people were asking me, what the heck's in that blue bag? So there's a whole video on my channel dedicated to the blue bag. So if anyone's curious. <laughs> That's too funny. Uh, so to kind of piggyback uh, on mine, and, and I got to run in a second, guys, by the way. Um, basically, to piggyback off of those photos, group photos, if you go on eBay and research, just type in vintage group photo. Uh, some war ones, some swimming ones, lifeguard ones. There's, they actually go for a pretty good amount of money, and you could find like stacks of this stuff at estate sales, and no one cares about this stuff. But usually, war, especially if there's something like this that you can attribute to a, a particular battalion or a particular, uh, you know, unit of the air force or something like that. Uh, those are definitely something to look out for. Uh, my last bolo I have for today is rare skateboarding magazines. This one happens to be a Frank magazine. Now I don't have a big brother magazine, which is, I wish I had one of those to show you. There was a magazine in the nineties called big brother. It was like, it was like thrasher, but it was more kind of niche and it had like uh, you know, 18 plus kind of risque kind of things in it. Those, some of those issues go for over a hundred dollars a piece. This Frank one is, is something that, you know, you can buy at a skate shop or whatever. There's some limited editions of these, but I just wanted to show you that, um, vintage skateboard magazines, uh, big brother in particular from the nineties, some of the earlier thrasher ones go for in trans world, go for a good amount of money, but the big brother ones are the ones to really look out for. Like, like I said, some of them go for a hundred dollars and this is kind of like a newer kind of one, uh, basically like a, a lifestyle magazine, but just like kind of uh, culture magazines, and especially skateboard stuff uh, is something to definitely look out for. Okay. You want to hop on down there, Dom? Yeah, sure. So uh, I always joke, uh, but it's true. Um, don't ever pass up on the kids books section when you go to book sales or library sales. Uh, the two main places that I go to first are the science fiction and fantasy section. That's number one. And then number two, it's the kid books area. And I have found big complete sets of kids books there before that go for uh, good money. And I often go on the bag day when you can just pile everything into the bag, you know, and get it for just a couple of bucks. But one of the sets, and it's not just this set, but there's other sets by her, uh, is the author Joy Wilt right here. Now, some of you are going to remember this book when you see the back of it, okay? A lot of you who are watching this may have had this set as a kid. You could see this one here, which is um, Kids Guys to uh, Making Friends. I'd like to think that reading this book when I was a kid, 
is why I've made many friends here in the YouTube land, like Chris and Don. <laughs> in fact, we could read a little story here about meeting Chris. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, these these are good. So if you could pick these up, um, they they came in a little. Um, they originally came in a box um, that opened up. It, it was almost looked like a gate, and it kind of held all of the books uh, inside of it. Um, but these will sell for. Um, anywhere between like a hundred, hundred twenty-five dollars If you have all of them, there were 24 of them total. Um, and they're going to go out media mail. So Don, Don, that's your favorite topic lately. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. But the, these will go out media mail and they will go in the book section. So you don't have to worry about it. There's not going to be a problem. So, uh, that's, uh, Let that's me books by joy wilt it's these kids guides if even if you don't have the whole set some people will buy them in a, in a smaller lot it came in 24 but if you have a smaller amount some people uh you know will buy those as well let me just call call out for uh, jacob charles thanks so kindly for this five dollar super chat much appreciated hopefully everybody's getting some good content and from the feed it does look like everybody's enjoying the content um, I'm going to piggyback off on Dom for just a second. There's Sweet Pickles. There's the Babysitter's yeah. Club. There's the Magic Tree House. I mean, even the, the softbound ones can go. I mean, there's just so many series of, of kids' books that go. And I, I've touched on, like, little golden books. We were at Savers, like, maybe four months before they closed down here. And I walked up on, like, 79 all-A first edition uh, little golden books. And we made, like... We paid 69 cents at Savers, a piece for them. And I want to say we ended up with like $1,268 out of that grouping of them from Savers. You know, so around here, at least our Savers, the, the people who knew how to price weren't working on Sundays. So Sundays was the day to go because the people who didn't know or didn't look stuff up back in the day were working Sundays. So we always bombed it first thing Sunday. More people are at church, and you were able to usually rake out at, at Savers. That way. at least that's was our our sake on that. So very cool. Hey guys, I got to cut out. I'll watch the rest of this on the back end. Those that are watching, definitely click the like button. And uh, thank you guys for having me come in here. I got to go pick up the wife. She's probably wondering where I'm at right now. I'm like, okay. oh, I'm I'm playing with the boys. I'll Glad see you guys to later. have you, Chris. So anytime. Thanks, thank you guys. Well, now it's just the two of us now. Then so, there were two. I feel like we're playing Survivor. Yeah, we're still alive here. <laughs> I'm going to call out then another item here. No, actually, it would be back to you, Dom. Or did you just – you did the last one. Yeah. Uh, now yeah. we're all messed up. I think it is my turn. I'm sorry. I think it is my turn. Let me call out – now, I don't mess with China too much. But one thing that I always do very, very well on China, and I don't have to hold on to very long, are – Advertising calendar plates. Now, this is from um, Botkins Hardware Company in Botkins, Ohio. It's obviously from 1912, and it's a calendar plate. A dollar is what I paid for this. And not only that, this is a Dresden, China. It's a nice early piece. It's German-made. It's fine. Something like this, I will probably put 75 bucks on. Again, a dollar. At Savers, you might spend $2.99 or, or up to, say, $7.99 and something like this. That's iffy at $7.99, but at a dollar purchase, I'll buy these all day long. This is something you can find at some of the smaller um, thrift stores, not the chains, or most definitely I find these at like um, flea markets and things along that line. Estate sales are usually good on these as well, too. You might pay a little more in estate sale, though. So auctions as well, I've bought like 26 or 27 of these all at once before, you know, average price on those was like a dollar as well too. So in big group lots, but something I do look for, I do um, avoid most China, but these again, it's local. It's a small town. Botkins is a very small town. It's got a lot going for it. And again, it's a nice condition. It's a nice manufacturer. I don't mess with most China anymore. There's just very few, but again, this is a good one just like salt and pepper shakers and things along that line too. But this is a good one that's always on my list. Calendar plates. Every time I see them, if they're a dollar or two, I'll buy them. Okay, that's cool. Um, okay, so this next one is not going to be surprising to people. Like you're not going to be shocked and say, wow, I can't believe that that sells for anything. But I'm going to tell you why I'm showing you this in, in just a moment. Uh, I know Chris uh, Cernak is in there. He's going to love this one because he liked my, my videos where I found all these. Um, if you remember, I went to an, uh, a family estate sale and I crawled this uh, crawl attic 
and I found all of these vintage. Ah, oh, look, Don's got the same one. <laughs> That's hilarious. So brand new, complete. This thing comps for almost five hundred dollars. It's crazy. Um, right now, um, if it's pre-owned, you know, the highest comp for a pre-owned is right around like three fifty. 375. Now this one is supposed this one slave one, which is Bulbas uh Fett's ship. And if you don't know, if you're not too much into Star Wars, if you're not a Star Wars nerd, but you see that name there, Boba Fett, he's one of the most popular Star Wars characters around. So anything Boba Fett related, including the ship, uh, will go for uh will go for a lot of money. But I'm mentioning this. Uh, there were a lot of other toys that I wound up getting at that sale, like the creature cantina. I just sold that for 220 the other day. Uh, all of the toys that I got there, I wound up getting for 120. Now, again, I'm going to go back to why I'm talking about this, even though it's so it's obvious you'd want to pick up Star Wars toys. But a lot of people that miss out on it because um, when I had gone to that estate sale, the woman who was kind of coordinating everything for the family told me, you know, you see all those Star Wars toys that you're going to go look at right now? She goes, yeah. She goes, well, I just put them on Craigslist this morning for $150 for all of them. She goes, and not one person responded to the ad yet. And so that's why I'm mentioning it because if someone, the way these local marketplaces pretty much work, and I know that this from a buyer and a seller, is that usually it runs on a first come first serve basis. So if someone would have put dibs on it or claim on it and said they were coming at one o'clock or 12 o'clock, they would have been off limits to me. But because nobody reached out, you know, it was open for me to go back and get. And, you know, there's like easily over a thousand dollars worth of Star Wars toys there. Yeah, I love Star Wars toys. I mean, that that was the, I grew up on first, it was the large size G.I. Joes. Then I had Evil Knievel, um, Six Million Dollar Man and Bigfoot. And then we moved into uh, Micronauts in 77 and then Star Wars came out. And then after that, it was all three and three quarter inches. The Micronauts are three and three quarter inches too, or at least the majority of them, like Time Travelers, Atomic Pharaoh, all the characters from that. So if you don't know what Micronauts is, I would honestly recommend typing in a Microman search first and then do micro um, knots as well because Micronauts were purchased from Takara Microman in Japan and then they put them out under the Hasbro line um, later on and uh, that was like the, the bomb for me. I loved the old toys, Star Wars. I used to have an army of stormtroopers from, you know, in 78 you know, like 30 of them, just the plain stormtroopers. And we had our own little Death Star in there. And my parents ordered from the Sears catalog. And I'm sure Don probably knows Sears catalog had things that you couldn't get in normal places. One of the biggest boo uh, errors in the Star Wars line, or not one of the biggest, but a decent sized error is the giant Snagopus out of the Sears only cantina set. Look this one up because this is one of the best figures you can find. Snaggle, Snaggletooth in the movie is a small character. When they gave the photos to the company that was making the figures for Sears, they didn't know it was a short character. They had a bust or a waist up figure of it. And it was also in black and white. So the coloring wasn't quite right either from the, the gist on it. So there's stuff like that. Like if, if you're into vintage toys, like, you know, me and Dom love vintage toys. Sears also had like um, the Battlestar Galactica uh, figures from 78 and 79 and such forth. They had Balthazar and um, I can't remember. Lucifer was the other one. I think the robot with the domed head that lit up from the TV series. You could only get those from the um, Sears catalog. And like the gold Cylon, if you know, know your vintage toys, there's a silver Cylon from the original 78 set and a gold Cylon. The gold Cylon was a mail away only, and he's worth like four or five times what any of the silver Cylons are worth. But anyway, I don't want to piggyback on that too long. Let me show out another one here. You got, you got anything to cover on that there, Dom? No, no. I, people are loving hearing us geek out. So uh. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're collectible geeks, I guess you could say. I love toys. Toys are the bomb. Um, another line of stuff to get are travel items. And I talk about them. Now, these aren't just any kind of travel item. Uh, Lloyd Bremen, uh, Norddeutscher, is a North German uh, Lloyd Bremen. It's a, a uh, steamship line that traversed the, the, the uh, oceans for many years, several decades. These are from the 30s. These are instructional um, booklets given out to passengers on how to play deck games and things like that. I've got menus, the whole works. Any of this stuff, Lloyd Bremen... Let's see if you can see that okay up there. That's what you want to look for on stuff like this. 
Um, steamship company lines, I buy, I buy something steamship related every single week of my life. There isn't a week goes by that I don't snag something that's transportation related. Steamship lines are the bomb. Like Titanic is a steamship line, you know, and we've sold a Titanic postcard for almost $600 before. There, this stuff is out there. It's not like some super, super rare thing. I bet you that if you looked on eBay right now for a real picture, real photo postcard of the Titanic, there will be one up on eBay right now. Just like Hindenburg items and things like that. Transportation in general are something that I look for every day of my life. I don't always find it every day, but it's it's a huge category that makes us a ton of money. And it's not just menus. There, there's hundreds and hundreds of different items, even down to the towels that were on a, a steamship from the 50s or before. And I've had like bed sheets from the 20s and 30s from steamship lines. Those are two, three, four, five hundred dollars for just a standard sheet from some of these lines because they don't exist anymore. You know, other than say, like, you know, maybe the Queen Mary, something from that that ship may not be as valuable just because of its history and that it's been opened up and it basically a museum for many years. But transportation items are the bomb. It, it, you see the stuff I sell, whether it's postcards, labels, whatever it is, if it's steamship related, airship related, train related. Uh, trolley car related, any of that stuff is just the bomb for for you to get. It just sells quickly, good money, and and you know there's no fakes in 99% of this kind of stuff. You're getting a legit deal almost every time, other than maybe the Titanic items. But what yeah. you got? Tom? Yeah, it's awesome. Well, you know, I I I had this one sitting around and um, wasn't necessarily going to be the next item that I did, but I said, you know what? It's a perfect segue. Uh, with you talking about transportation items and us just recently talking about toys. I know you're going to know what this is and you're going to love this. This is the uh, Hubbly Kitty Toys metal planes. These are great. I the also actually, up on them. Yeah, you can right here. And the legs, the, the wheels should retract yeah. inside too. Yeah. Yep. See yeah. that? Yep. So you'll find the name. It's easy to identify because it has it right inside, just written there Hubbly Kitty Toys. Um, this one here could, you know, this is like easy, like 50 bucks, but some of these will go for around $200. So if you could get them cheap, like I got this thrown in, thrown in with all the Star Wars toys. So like, this is like, this is for, for those of you who don't understand, if you don't purchase things in lots, especially if you're brand new, if you watch Don's videos and even mine, when you hear Don say, or I say, I ha have nothing into it. I have like pennies into it. You might think, like, how the heck is that possible? You have nothing into it. You have this metal plane. Well, I have nothing into it because it's a throw-in off of something that I got for $120. I made everything back with one sale and in profit. So the way you really would think about it is you have nothing into it anymore. It's just profit. And that's why that's why Don and I kind of hit it off is because we do a, we have a lot of the same strategies and same interests. And um, we use some of the same phrases kind of independently. So, um, but anyway, that's my uh, bolo right there is the Hubbly Kitty Toy. You ever see that name? Pick it up. Th that same plane comes in like 15 or 20 different uh, styles of paint jobs, including uh, ones that look just like a real plane too. And I've seen some that, that are a different version. They're more detailed than that. I'm guessing it's maybe not a kid's version, but more uh, a bigger person's version, I would guess. But I've had that exact plane probably a half a dozen times. Not that same color scheme, but yeah, same just on it. That's always on my list. Hubbly in general, um, before eBay banned selling um, the vintage cap guns, I used to make a ton of money off of Hubblies and old cast iron cap guns. Nowadays, I just don't mess with them anymore because of the legalities on selling them. I don't want anybody coming back. We have a BOP, and if I got sued, it would handle it. But I, I just don't want any issues with stuff like that. So I stay away from uh, cap guns, just FYI on, on that. Let me uh, show out something unusual here. I, I'm big into, you know... Um, 19th century items or before that's that's what I love and I love advertising items and I hunt and peck in everywhere I could imagine to find advertising items and I, I that's majority of, of one of my stores that you guys get to see a lot of the items in there are advertising related now this may not look like anything to anybody and what does it actually say it says here's the tip it can't wear through this is a dress stay piece of advertisement and on the back it literally says trade sterling dress stay uh mark patent october 4th 1892 that is literally when this is from 
And this is an advertising piece that would have been given to the ladies um, with probably a card. I wished I had the card that probably went with it. But something like this almost never shows up. I've only seen one or two other ones from a corset similar to this. And this is basically like the boning in a corset. Um, something like this may go for 125 bucks. I didn't pay a dime for it. As Dom was saying, this was thrown in along with a bunch of other sewing stuff. This isn't a bag of sewing stuff. I got some zippers. And my, my opinion is they thought it was a zipper and didn't look at it very closely. Didn't see the little banner on there advertising it. But if you look this up, there's trade cards in the whole works. This is much more scarce than a trade card because it's literally a, a piece of celluloid in there is what it feels like. Uh, with fabric around it. It's custom made just to give out as a promo to women to try and get them to buy their products. I mean, this is a good example of a salesman sample, an advertising piece. Again, I didn't pay a dime for this. This was totally free and it's going to be worth over a hundred bucks in my pocket. I know people say, well, it's not sold, but I've had enough stuff in this genre. You know, I've got 15 or 20,000 trade cards in one store alone, not counting the other stores that I have, you know, we've got 65,000 items up. I've sold enough stuff. I can tell you for sure, price wise, that's going to be over a hundred bucks on this little piece of nothing. So it, it doesn't have to be a card. It doesn't have to be paper. This is something that turned, turned up out of a sewing lot, out of an old sewing box, basically at a sale, you know, and it's something that everybody walked by. This was the second day, the afternoon. I was only going to the sale because it was only two miles away. If it wasn't two miles away, I wouldn't even have went by. But, you know, I found probably five or six hundred dollars worth of stuff in the 20 minutes or so I was there. I didn't look at any big items. I just looked for the smalls, the junk stuff thrown in a box, any of that kind of stuff's what I look for. So, you know, just another example of stuff that I bet you nine out of 10 of you, if not maybe almost 10 out of you would have walked by this thinking, what the heck, that's nothing. But, you know, it's, it's a good piece of advertisement if you spend the time to look at it. So, yeah, that's good. Okay, now this next one I um I brought out Don because somebody earlier was asking about uh, Pepsi advertising and Pepsi products and Pepsi is um, one of my favorite brands. I like the advertising on it. I like the you know to display it and I like their products. Everyone knows I'm a big Mountain Dew fan, but I also like drinking Pepsi as well. And um, I would say if you find I come across this stuff a lot at older homes when I go to estate sales are um, basically Pepsi bottles that are from other countries um, that, you know, someone bought while they were traveling and brought back and they had in their collection or an older brand of Pepsi product. And this, I'm talking about Pepsi, but you could use it for other products as well, like Coca-Cola and stuff. Um, but basically bottles kind of dovetails what you were talking about recently, Don. I know you did a video on glass bottles, um, but this here would be one example this is a, it's pretty big. It's a one and a half liter Pepsi bottle. Now, how, how would you like to drink this thing? I mean, this thing is huge. You know, look at the size of that cap. Okay. Uh, this came from Canada. Uh, it's very unusual. Uh, I did get it on a state sale. I paid like a, I don't know, 50 cents for it. It was not much. It came in like a big bundle. I'm honestly not sure what Does it that have a cello. Is that paper or is it cello? It's cello. I've got that same one, exactly. Um, my wife's got a huge, if you go back to some of my early videos, my wife's got about 20 Pepsi tin signs. Yep. She's got light up clocks and that's on her, her assortment. There's a two liter one of those as well too. Yeah, yeah. So um, again, I'm not sure what the comp will be for this. I mean, the closest thing I could tell you is that they're, and it's not exact, but it, there's one, it's a different shape, but it's the same liters. It's one and a half liters from Japan. That one, to just to give you an idea, is right now listed on eBay for $128, and it has five watchers on it. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know, Don, if you have an idea what this About 35 bucks is what you'd pay in a store for that right here. I'm right up by Canada. Those turn up around here quite often. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, and it's not a huge one. Japan, Jap my wife's got four. And I'm, in fact, I've been talking about it. We're going to go up to, to my kitchen area one day and we're going to do a live chat or something. And I'm going to show you some of my wife's, because she's got 
200 Pepsi bottles, probably of all various different sizes. Japan ones, for some reason, because of the, the distance go for yeah. way more. I've got like a yeah. Japanese can. That's like this from an airline that goes for like 225. Yeah. I paid a dollar for it. I didn't have any clue that it's valuable. It's Pepsi. So we bought it. The wife's keeping it. It didn't matter what the value, but the Japanese ones are like the best ones. The ones in, in um, the Japanese texts are Korean or uh, Chinese or any of the Asiatic countries over there. If the, the, the text on the bottle is, or the, the can is in uh, a foreign language like that, they always go for more. The, even the Saudi Arabia ones can go for some decent money, at least the ones that we've seen. That, it's funny you mentioned that, Don, because, uh, man, you're throwing my memory back, back in the day. But um, when I used to live in Florida, when I was going to graduate school, I went to a uh, went to the swap shop down there, and uh, basically it was our outdoor local flea market where we go on the weekends, and I actually found a Pepsi bottle from it was either Pepsi or Coke, I think it was Pepsi, but it was from Saudi Arabia. Uh, it was it still had the liquid in it and everything, uh, never was opened, and I'd be lying if I told you what it sold for, but I distinctly remember that it sold for you know, up like t closer to a hundred bucks. I mean, maybe like 70, 80, something like that. And I only paid like a buck or two for it. It was one of those early sales that kind of hooked me into, you know, reselling other things besides comic books and stuff. Uh, once I saw what things like that could go for. So um, just threw me back when you said Saudi Arabia right there. Oh, I love, I love bottles. Me and the yeah. wife collected soda signs forever. I've even pulled off one of the, uh, my, my wife's got a series. Um, she's got like the say Pepsi. She's got uh, Pepsi thermometers. I think all the way back to like 52 is her oldest Pepsi thermometer. That one we took off a building in Mississippi that had probably been on the side of that building since it was made. You know, it was all covered. It was all in, in disheveled and, and broken down. It was family property. So it wasn't like stolen or anything. It was on the back half of theirs. They owned, I don't know, 560 acres or some huge amount of land. And there was an old shop on it. And we got to keep that. And that's literally on the wall up there, too. Um, I love soda shop stuff. Um, I love the carriers. I love the bottles. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've taken rods and we went out into swamps and I've dug privies, you know, 10 foot deep holes into a privy digging up bottles. And we've pulled out hundreds and hundreds out of one hole. And then we've done the the uh, rod. You poke a giant rod. It's, it's like a 10 foot. Te teed off uh, rod. Usually we do it around creeks or waterbeds where people might have fished and thrown the bottles in. And you you stab this rod into the ground and you can hear it hit a bottle. It'll make a you can tell the difference between a bottle and a rock. Let's just put it that way. So I love 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 old bottles and onion bottles are like my favorite thing and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I even love watching that on TV too or on YouTube. Yeah, I've got a refrigerator right next to me. You can't see it now, but on top of it, it's just filled with old bottles <laughs> that got a list. I'll yeah. show you, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. We've got a, a barrister, which is a, um, it's a metal bookcase basically out of a hospital. It was made in like the twenties and it's three, it's like five foot tall and about four foot long. And it's full of nothing but bottles. Um, in fact, maybe if you looked at one of my older videos from like more than a year ago, you'll see it in there. But um, uh, bottles are my wife and I's thing. You know, in fact, we were in, we went down to Columbus the other day and took my son. We went on a little vacation and, and we ended up bringing bottles back, you know, and I'll pay, you know, decent money for bottles for our collection. My wife's um, middle name is Cleo and she found a Cleo Cola bottle. So it was a done deal. I didn't care what it cost. It was hers. And then she's got some items with her, her family's last name on it. We just bought because of that too, glass wise as well too. But let me, let me shout out another one here. Paper wise, again, everybody knows I'm in the paper this may not look like much. And I got a bunch of these. And that's usually what I find is a bunch of these people will collect these from the Commodore theater. And I believe this one's in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. But if you don't know where it's from, that's not a big ordeal because most of them will say an address. And if you type in the Commodore Walnut, all the information up there, you're going to find the city instantly. You're, you're not going to have any problem finding old uh, movie theaters. There's societies that just, you know, keep track of all the movie theaters and stuff like that. Here in, in my hometown, Toledo, there was the, the downtown Paramount where they had the, um, oh shoot, uh, I can't think what it's called, the, the Cinerama movies and stuff there. Um, and people collected stuff. My my Our prom chairs were from that movie theater and they were built in like 1930. And that's, they were donated to the school through Libby Owens Ford and a whole bunch of stuff like that. But the long story short, these are advertisements for movies. 
And if you pay attention, you'll see that it's it's a big one inside. Most people might look at the outside and think it's just junk paper. This is not newsprint. This is, you know, what would be inside of a magazine. And these would have been handed out at the theater so you know what's going on. Most theaters had stacks of these out there. These are things that would have been just, just thrown away or discarded. I get 15 or 20 bucks a piece on some of these. If you find one like for the Wizard of Oz or something like that, a Wizard of Oz piece like this, we've sold for 350 for Wizard of Oz, one of these. Now, if it was color and from something such as the Wizard of Oz, just a piece of paper like this from the Wizard of Oz in full color could get you 700 bucks. So, you know, I, I always pay attention to these. It helps to know like who's in them and some of the names on them. Basil Rathbone's in this one here, very well known. He did uh, Sherlock Holmes, if I'm not mistaken, is what he's known for. Like this one has Fred Astaire, which, you know, you, you can't do any better than that if you like musicals. So, you know, this is just a typical example of junk paper. I picked up about 50 of these for just a couple of, I think I got like $2 and 50 cents into them at most. But again, it, it was a bundle deal, just like Dom talks. It was a bunch of stuff all thrown together at the end. They said, how much you want for this? They gave me a price. They gave me a price and all these individual items. And at the end I asked, well, what would you give me for all of it together? And I even got it cheaper than the, their low budget prices for the individual stacks by bundling it one last time at the very end. So, you know, I, I've got almost nothing into stuff like this. But again, 15, 20 bucks all day long. This will fit in the duplex scanner, FYI. So just scans right on through. You don't have to do anything. It's a three or four second deal to scan this through the scanner at 72 DPI and off you go. I mean, it's, it's a no brainer. Why would you pass up paper like this? And this is better than a print ad because again, this is a flyer or a brochure line. This is not a print ad. This is a legit handout flyer. So uh, another good example of things that I always, 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 always look for. So. Okay. Um, I got at least one more in me, Don. Uh, I do have to pick my daughter up from marching band. Uh, Just going to ask you on that. Just going to yeah. ask. So, um, but I can at least show this one. So uh, this one is basically kind of a lesson that if you find one thing that is good look around and see if you could see something similar to it that you may be able to pair with it because it's kind of along those lines of when there's smoke there's fire look for more you know like for example if you see one of these tapes in one spot look around you might find they got scattered and put somewhere else but the items are going to show you here which is pretty cool i think don will appreciate this because i know he likes military stuff but this is kind of like a military yearbook. And this is for the USS Little Rock. And one of the things you'll notice here is that it says CLG-4 on it. Now, that is a uh, Cleveland-class uh, light cruiser. And if you open it up, what you're going to find inside are all sorts of um, you know, cool pictures of what life was like on the cruiser. And inside, sometimes you'll find there's Don's got. Do you, don't tell me you have the USS Little Rock, or I'm gonna. No, go. that's another military one. It was on my list of things to show as well, too. Okay, so sometimes inside you might find like little pieces of paper. Like this is all about the USS Little Rock, and so you know you could use that as part of your, um, you know, as part of your sale in your listing. But I don't want to rip it, but just to show you, like, you know, examples, like it show you what life is like on the fleet okay so i'm at basically i found this as an estate sale at a hoarder house and when i walked into this one room if you quickly looked in it all you would have thought is that the room was clothing because that's what it looked like this kind of stuff was all under clothing and in boxes and stuff and after i saw this and i saw that it said clg4 on it um i came across this same place. Now, when I saw that, I said, this now, that is, is good cool name. because now I have the uh, one of the actual supply hats from the ship with the actual book. So I'm definitely going to pair these two things together for a sale because um, I think that'll add a lot of value to it. Is there a leather sweatband in that helmet? Yeah. Is there a name written on it anywhere? Usually they wrote their names on it. It just said, no, I checked for that. It just says the original safety hat, but I don't see uh, a name anywhere in there. It's usually uh, written on the inside of the leather. You'd flap it down, at least on hats it usually is. Yeah. No, I mean, it does have the leather here, but it doesn't It doesn't have the name. That would have been cool 
uh, if it had the name on it, but but it doesn't. But um, actually, though, the whole issue with names, which is which is just kind of related to it, is that um, if you come across older military stuff, and um, be mindful that family members may contact you and they may ask you, like on eBay, hey, my family member was on that ship. Could you look it up and look up and see if their name was inside of it? I've it done that all the time. Yeah, I've done that for families and I'll take a picture of it and I'll send it to them. And at that point, you know, you're going to be able to command your price pretty much because they want the item now if you show it. So just remember that is that you could use those names to really help you make that sale. Now, we didn't plan this and I didn't plan that at all. But my father trained at Fort Knox and he was in, in the armor division. This is the exact patch that was on his shirt, which I still have. And he was a sharpshooter. He did the sharpshooter. He's got the silver sharpshooter medals and all that kind of stuff. But the point is, this is the same thing as what Don basically has. This is a yearbook for it. And I bought this thinking my father would have been in this one. It's obviously the wrong year, but um, this is what you would expect. It has everybody who would have graduated from, from this, basically the academy, I guess you could say to some extent, at Fort Knox. Um, these I always look for. And just like Dom's talking about yearbooks, I bought my father was in three yearbooks and I literally hunted down locally here and found those three yearbooks. Now twice I've got a set of them and my mom has a set of them. So people buy them, even me buy those. Now I didn't, I only paid a dollar or two because I got them locally from, you know, junk sales and stuff like that. But the point is that just like I buy them, other people buy them for the same reason, just like this is a good item here. And this was a dollar. You know, and inside of it, and I, we've already taken, there was photos in here, just like he had stuff in there. I took out the photos. We're selling those separately because they're just like group shots. Um, there's no name to who this book belonged to or anything else like that. So I'm not going to stick them together, but perfect example on things to find or any of these military ones. It's just basically a yearbook. I've seen yearbooks for all the way up to like Salvation Army has a school, if you didn't know that. They've got an academy and they've got yearbooks for that. They've got yearbooks. There's even like a Girl Scout Academy yearbook, um, Boy Scout yearbooks to some extent, um, even grade school books, yearbooks and things can go for good money if it has the right person in it. Now, uh, I'm not going to give you all the secrets talking about that um, because there's sites out there if you're you're in the know that have a list of who's in which yearbook. I'm not again. I, I can't give you every every bit of information. It's something that I've been invited to join, so it's not something that um, I can give out the information. But if you know and have the the right list or or know where to look, there are are sources that you can find that will have who's in what yearbook and to know instantly which yearbook to get up by the date and what city it's from. So there's yearbooks that can go for fifteen hundred dollars. There's ones that like a Jim Morrison, a Jim Morrison yearbook went for like twenty six hundred dollars not too long ago because he signed it. So that's another thing that, that you look for are signatures in these yearbooks. When I lived in, in Meridian, Mississippi area, there was a, a famous person there that used to eat in my restaurant and I brought in a yearbook with her in it and she signed it for me. So, you know, that adds to it. The signatures are fairly the same. I didn't worry of whether it was old signature or not, but you know, stuff like that goes for some good money and an autograph on a yearbook can go for more than just a straight autograph as well, because it's got a photo in it too. And it's something more personable. Most yearbooks, there's only, you know, hundreds of them at the most at made. And back in the day, some parents couldn't afford a yearbook. So the best vintage yearbooks to sell from a long time of experience are newer ones in the last 20 or 30 years. When you go back so far, there's not many people alive that would care about the yearbook. So the ones I always get the most top dollar for are from like, say, 75 on up. Usually you kind of give a or give or take on year, but 75 or up are, are usually what I mess with the most. I'm not saying I don't sell ones from the 40s and 50s, but I sell the newer ones so much quicker, um, especially if it's a small town and there's not a lot of the yearbooks around. So um, I don't want to run uh, Dom up too longer. We'll probably end it on here. Um, I've got some more items here, but we're going to have another show um, with Chris as well. It'll be on Chris's channel. Um, and if Chris isn't available for some other shows too, me and Dom might do some other shows here, just the two of us as well. I'm just trying to shoot you out some knowledge whenever we have free time. Again, Dom does a full-time thing too. I work horrendously amount, uh, long amounts of hours. Like even today, I was up at 530 I won't even give you the list of stuff I did today, but I literally couldn't even get back in touch with Dom until after five when my employees left. 
everybody's going back to school. So I've got everybody trying to get in as many hours as they can before school rolls back in. So I jam pack everybody in here. I mean, seven people working in a day where when the location is pretty tight, but you know, it, we got a lot of stuff done, but my day is just hectic from morning till night. So at least it has been, it should slow down here when we uh, go more towards uh, fourth quarter. But uh, anyway, I'm going to let Dom do a shout out before uh, we, we holler off on here and uh, say his final thoughts for us. Yeah, I really appreciate you having me on, Don, as usual. Uh, it's always an honor to be on your channel. Uh, Chris was joking around in the chat that me and you should uh, should have a thrift battle one day. But uh, make no mistake, guys, Don would clean my clock in a thrift battle. I'm just trying to hold my own here. So, uh, you know, you got nothing to complain about. I've seen some of your stuff, too. So <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did. Um, Don hit said the like it. button we have like 180 people in and i only have like 70 likes so yeah, hit guys. that like button there if you enjoyed it you know yeah. we're trying to give you some real good solid everything we've talked about today are things that we 100 percent buy whenever we find it these are not fantasy pie in the sky stuff you can see like some we we pulled up almost the same things that's how much <laughs> we look for the same kind of things like slave one i've got two of those right now Two box slave ones in my in my possession right this minute. Yeah, well, just, you know what, Don? It just reinforces over and over again why we uh, why we click and get along well, and people seem to like these shows that we do together. So uh, uh, it's it's funny to it's and it's great to have someone with such shared interests. So I always enjoy coming on with you. Um, you know, for for those who my um, Don said it was okay. Uh, for those who um, you know, who wanted to see more or kind of be on the lookout items or stuff. If, you know, you've not seen my, my stuff before I, uh, I am over on, uh, on YouTube primetime treasure hunter. So come on by. And uh, I have his link down in the description down here too. his link and name and the whole works too for you. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming by and saying hi. And, uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Um, you know, when I'm live with Don, either on Chris's channel or on my channel, I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more of us together. What I think the 23rd, we're going to be on Chris's. Is that what we're talking about now? Yep. So yep. 23rd will be on uh, Thrift Shop Hustlers channel. Chris, good guy. Dom, good guy as well. Again, you guys know I don't go on too many shows. I have been asked to go on many other shows. I just don't do it. I don't have the time or I just don't want to mess with, you know, certain, certain folks. No offense to anybody else. There's a lot of good YouTubers out there too. So, you know, uh, everybody has their own little niche and, you know, um, I'm not a clothed person, so I don't go on too many channels where there's just a clothing thing. Um, just my personal preference again. Uh, I, Greatly appreciate Chris coming on as well as Dom on the show tonight. And I hope everybody shows them some love. If you haven't went to their channel and subscribed, you're really missing out because both those guys are good guys. Chris works for the Cancer Society as well. Dom is is truly a doctor because he has a PhD. Um, you know, so we're not stupid people. We're we're we we try to to express honest, sincere. Um, true facts. Um, we both have reputations. I as an artist as well, Dom as a professional, Chris as a professional. So I'm not going to give you bad information because it, it can reflect on my personal other businesses as well as say Dom's personal career. So again, this is the real dope. If you enjoyed it again, I, I ask you one last time to subscribe to Chris, subscribe to Don. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit subscribe as well as hit the like. And we will let you go for the evening. And it was glad and great joy to have everybody on tonight. So thanks, everybody, and have a good evening. Bye, everyone.